the wish of my you princess you has been entertaining audiences with a unique Joey style Coco Diaz has of been rocking comedy humor stages since the 90s, for 15 right? years. With her tongue in cheek, films and she's been exploring such topics as the dynamics of the male female relationships, or as we past, call them here in the studio, dirty thoughts, and the proliferation a different of the sensual feminist. She's a little firecracker rolled up, and that's why I love her, and that's why you're going to love listening. So tune in, all right? The musician guy I talked about last week, one of the reasons I even went out with him, because someone told me he used to be one of the drummers in the Bay City Rollers. And I was like, really, an original member? And they were like, I don't think original member. And it's like, if you're going to fuck someone on the Bay City Rollers, they have to be original, no original right? Member. No knockoffs. Absolutely. Right? No, no, no. No replacements. No replacement dick. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. Fuck that I don't that like shit. that either. I don't like that either. It's like the, the, uh, the Journey guy. You know, they have the new singer for Journey. And, uh, you know, like, you know, I wouldn't go there. You're not, you're a replacement. But he sounds the same, I heard. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I've matter. I haven't seen him. I don't even know what the guy looks like. i seen matter. old Journey, and that's good enough for me, bitches. You know what I'm saying? I hear you, Jelly. What's up? Beauty and the Beast Podcastville. We're back, bitches. We are back. That we is correct. We took a week off. We put a podcast out, but now we're officially fucking back. Yeah, yeah. What's up, you sexy animal? What is up? I have a crazy day. I already told you. I have to go to the San Manuel Indian Casino. You know, whenever I'm at a casino, it really gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling when I walk into the bathroom and there's needle dispensaries on the wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you can't go home and give yourself, A, your drugs, or B, your diabetes medicine because you're so addicted to gambling, you shouldn't be gambling. You know, That's I don't want to walk crazy. in there, wash my hands, and look at needles. I don't want to do it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway, I'm going there and I'm going to entertain the lovely people. So they don't just have a little tampon box anymore. They have a needle compartment. I, I know. I you know, know. Times I know. are moving ahead. I know. You know what Come saying? on. And you know what's crazy? They probably have an application on your iPhone to find where that needle dispensary is so you can put your fucking needle in there. That is, you could, there is probably an application on iPhone where you could look for needle dispensaries across the world. I'm sure there is. If not, please, I'm would someone go and uh, create that? We'll share the, ex the, the revenue from it and it will be the beauty and the beast and into your name <laughs> what's happening Felicia Michael oh that. Joey I have to go do a big therapy thing you know with the ex and three therapists about my kids and everything's all good but it it just makes me uptight you know that's always a fucking kick in the balls yeah going to therapy for any fucking reason at all sometimes sometimes it's enlightening you know I never really fucked around with therapy except when I was in the halfway house and I would weigh the coke and I would go through my skin so I failed so they made me go to Infinity Rehab from 6 to 9 at night in Boulder, Colorado, right down the block from them. You have to give them like $22 a week or something. And it was pretty interesting because I always felt the lady therapist was a fucking instigator. She always, like, she's always digging holes trying to get you pissed at something. You know what right. I'm saying? And that's what I didn't like about it. I never went back. And then for a while, when I got separated, uh, one of the guys at the halfway house is a friend of a friend's, and I was at a party one night, and he was there, and he goes, you know, when people get separated, maybe they should come in and talk for a little while. So for a couple of weeks, I went and talked. His last name was Schweber. He was a good guy from Long Island. What was his last name? Schweber. Schweber? Howie, Schwe <laughs> Howie Schweber and his brother. I can't remember what the other brother was, but they were good guys. Can you say me. that ten times? Howie Schweber, 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 bitches. My nipples just got That's hot. right. That's right. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed something. What? But I quit smoking. Oh, my God. I'll tell you, you what happened, did. guys. I'll tell you what happened. I quit smoking five years ago. When I first moved to L.A., I had never smoked before. And about three months before I moved to L.A., for some reason or another, I started smoking. And throughout the comedy store and bumming and this and that, I started smoking like two, three packs a day. But I don't smoke whole cigarettes. I throw them out, you know, but still. And then I quit. And I didn't like the smell of it and whatever. And then last year I was shooting a movie. And on the movie, I started smoking in between breaks. Then I would smoke at night. Then I wouldn't smoke for three days. Then I would smoke at night. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I come here and do the podcast. I want to be loose, so I'd smoke in the daytime. Then I wouldn't smoke for two or three days in the daytime. Then Terry started smoking again. Uh, see, that's not good when your partner has the same vice as you have. And no, and this is what's been going on. Last good. week, two of my fucking friends' wives died. And both of them died from fucking cancer. Roger Holloway's wife died. My condolences. And my main man, Carmine Balzano's wife died. And Carmine Balzano's wife had the cancer, not from smoking, but it went away. And then it attacked him again, uh, uh, you know, lat two weeks ago. Yeah. And they put her in the hospital Wednesday, and she died Friday morning. And it was weird. I was thinking about him, and I called him, and he goes, I have bad news. And then I talked to... Uh, 
Roger Holloway, his wife died last Wednesday. My friends went on Friday, they buried her Saturday. I talked to him Sunday a little while, we goofed around a little bit. I talked to him Monday and it was the weirdest thing. This is how he said it to me, we were talking and we were just talking about a situation when we were kids. He broke my friend's arm one time at like three in the morning in a fist fight and they're still best buddies and stuff. But uh, he, in the middle of the conversation he stopped and he goes, Cox, I miss my wife. And I gotta tell you something, Felicia, it fucking killed me inside. Aww, so that was it. So yeah. Monday night, my wife got home, and after the podcast and stuff, that's when Roger told me that. I was mm-hmm. at Marie ST, and he goes, I was talking to him on the phone, he goes, you know, I miss my wife. In the middle of a tirade that we were both laughing, like, you know, mm-hmm. you're just fucking like, ha, 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 ha. He just went, I miss my wife. And I fucking killed me. And that night, I had to take garbage cans out when I got home. And all of a sudden, I heard something, it was Terry. And she was taking the garbage cans out with me. And on the way back, I was looking at her in the driveway. And I, and I remember Rogers fucking saying that. I miss my wife. And it was so profound how he said it to me. I just looked at Terry and hit home. And that night we went to Target and I bought patches. And that's it. Wow. wow. I don't want to go through that with my wife. I don't want to go through yeah. that with nobody. I yeah. couldn't imagine having so to go So she visit. quitting too? Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. And, and we're not. Did you ask her to? Or no, just... we just talked about it. We're like, you know what? She got sick last week for five yeah. days. Yeah, and she she's sick, not yeah. stupid. Yeah. She's not stupid. She goes, you know what? Part of that was the fucking cigarettes while I was sick. Because she goes, I was fine on Wednesday. I smoked a few cigarettes because I was bored and I got sick again. You know, Terry's not stupid. We went through that together. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, I quit first and then she stuck around for a while. Me, I don't care if she quits or not. I wouldn't hold it against her. I just know I don't want to smoke. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't tell her what to do, but you can't tell another person I don't want to fucking do. have to go to. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, people. I don't ever want to go to the hospital and visit nobody, and I don't want nobody coming to the hospital and visit me. Mm. That's my fucking motto. Yeah. I hate hospitals. I got everything to do with them. <clears throat> I could live with anything in this life. I just, I'm not the type of person to go into a hospital daily and see somebody. I would. I'd do it for anybody to give them life. Yeah. But it would break my heart the rest of the fucking day. Yeah. I don't want to do it. No, it's tough. I uh, My mother was always sick, and I was in hospitals all the time it's visiting tough. her when I was a kid. And I uh, hate fucking hospitals. It puts you in a mood. It puts me oh, in a fucking yeah. mood. That... I, me- I remember when she, she went and had, her, when she had her stroke, I had to get a ride to go to the hospital. And this is right before she had it. And uh, she was really sick and in the hospital and she had the stroke right in front of me and the doctor was there and you know it was really scary and I remember I went home and it was snowing and you know uh, I hitch- I had to hitchhike and I was like in this field and it was like you know Colorado so it's lots of snow and like I just went out there and I swear to God I made like a hundred snow angels in the snow I was so freaked out about it no, you know it's, uh, it's, a, it's a hard it's thing at any age it's not to good. Handle, you know? I don't like having bad habits around me in this age either, Felicia. I just really don't. I just really don't. It's been too long. I yeah. finally got shit in tune and stuff. I tell you, it's a lot of fun smoking cigarettes. And it's you know a lot what? of fun my when you're mom creative. Was sick because of cigarettes. Yeah. My mom smoked two packs no, to three packs of it, cigarettes a day. It makes you sick. Yeah. You know, my lungs got a little congested last week, so Monday I went and bought some patches. Yesterday, I had to go to acupuncture anyway. I told her to clean out everything, the yeah. adrenals, the fucking lungs. I said, just start from scratch. I went for a run last night. I'm a little sore. You know, I went to karate yesterday. It's just, uh, I've worked too hard. You yeah. Know? And uh, I'll take anything. If I get hit by a fucking car, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. But when you know you're doing something, right. and it's that bad. And I got to tell you something, man. You know, I've done blow, I've done heroin, and there's after effects. You know, one of the worst things I ever did was an oxycodone. And I didn't even do the whole thing. I did like a fucking sixteenth of it. I don't know how people eat fifty of those things a day. Oh, I don't get that. That, that was the worst feeling either. of all time. Yeah. But I gotta tell you something. When I smoke cigarettes, I feel shitty. Yeah. The next day I feel shitty. I have a hard time fucking sleeping and breathing. I got sleep apnea as it is. So I made the kind. And it was funny because this time I thought about it and I go, no, it's done. You know, the first time I thought about it, it was the same thing. The first time I quit smoking a little different, it was under different circumstances. I tortured myself to death. I told you I bought a grandma blow and locked myself in an apartment with no fucking cigarettes. That's torture. Yeah. But I knew I would get so paranoid I would not leave the well, fucking house. Well, has it been harder this time? Not at all. No, not at all. No, you know what the problem was, Felicia? I'll tell you what it is, bro. I am uh, I'm a creature of habit. Mm-hmm. And there's things that sometimes, you know, Going to jail or being without for a couple of days really teaches you about life. You know, sometimes you're like, fuck, I got no weed. What am I going to do? And all of a sudden you get involved in something. 
And you don't smoke for a day. And you're like, I survived. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I tell people with booze and all that stuff, just try it for a day. The more hours you try it, you never know. I watched that show Relapse the other day. Oh, you did? Did you watch it? Mm -hmm. I just was scanning the channels and it yeah. was on. And it's pretty interesting because the chick was on fucking pills and she tried to get off and it was just a constant puke fest. And the lady looked at her and said, you know what, you've been doing this for eight hours. The lady looked at her like ready to tap out. She's like, it's been eight hours, I can't take this. She goes, just think about it. You got eight more hours and then you'll never have to go through this again. Yeah. And it really made fucking sense, you know. Wow. Giving up things is one of the hardest things yeah. in the world. I read the Keith Richards book all the times he'd have to give up heroin in mm -hmm. the, the 24 hours and he'd have to hire somebody and giving up anything, whether it's coffee. I gave up Yum Yum Donuts for Lent and I have not even thought about it. But you're going to bring some for the Easter Fuck yeah, right? I'm going to bring some. But it's funny because I couldn't live without those chocolate coconut ones. The little cake ones were oh, fucking really? were just addicting, yeah. and I was and I wasn't going over there every day. I was going over there like three nights a week when I do a gig. Yeah, and it's not even the fat content or the six points of the donut. It was I don't want all that sugar in my blood yeah. at that type of fucking night. Plus, you know I don't want diabetes. I mean it's just so weird. You get to a certain ages and yeah. you, you got to look out for yourself. You really do. And I did so much abuse, the late teens. The 20s I would and the say 30s. probably, yeah. 25 <laughs> fucking years of yeah. abusing your kidney and snorting cut and fucking lint off the floor and, you know, <laughs> eating pills and eating fried foods. And I got your liver comedy. probably has, like, lint on it. Oh, <laughs> forget about it. There was nights I would get dead finger instead of dead dick. You ever get dead finger when you can't even finger the chick no more? You, get dead <laughs> finger. you know what I'm saying? Like, I got dead dick and I got dead finger from all the coke I did. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, do you, you have dead, dead tongue? No, I've no, never had dead well, tongue. The tongue okay. don't tap out. The only thing that fucks up with the tongue a little compartment in the bottom. When you eat a lot of ass, you get that little wing on the bottom and it swells up the next morning. And every once in a while you pop it and a little something comes out of there like twice that's happened in my life. That's a long night of eating that snatch. Maybe I wish I wish I had a camera maybe, to see Felicia's oh face God. right now. Maybe you were just eating the wrong snatch. Jenny. No, that was a long time ago. She was young. Who the fuck knows? That was like a... I haven't had one of those in like 15 fucking years, something under your tongue the next morning. By the way, someone emailed us. Oh, gosh, I wish I could remember his name. And he, uh, Oh, no, on the comment board. <coughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, uh, Felicia, uh, Felicia should let Joey see her, uh, you know, monkey. Her monkey. And, <laughs> uh, and Joey should let Felicia see his Cuban egg roll. And I have seen uh, Joey's Cuban egg roll, and I got to tell you, it kind of looked, you, uh, you show me the Cuban egg roll, like mm -hmm. every time you got a hole in your pants, no, please. That no, Cuban no. egg roll is always trying to escape. That's why you always have the Hole right there. No, that yes. one time. <laughs> no. <laughs> that time at and, the gay bar. Yeah, and you showed me your balls. No, that, that was, was a different time. No, that was the yeah. best time when I took my pants out the gay bar. I was so Rose. surprised you How did that. Great that was, was that. awesome. The room froze. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Listen, when a regular guy takes his pants down at a gay bar, yeah. it always, it's yeah. like E.F. Hutton. It's like the guy that bumps into the DJ booth right. and the goes, oh, yeah. because you're looking for trouble. It's like a chick going into a biker bar and saying, look at these titties. Yeah. You, something's going to happen. You might get tackled. You might, you know. Well, I do remember seeing your ball sack and thinking to myself, wow, Joey's ball sack does kind of look like a road map to insanity. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's got those veins. Like crazy it. veins going everywhere. Oh, it's tremendous. Yeah. I trimmed it the other night. I'm you ready for the road. It? Sure, you got to trim your fucking you Okay, know? you know what? I was trying to trim my vagina all the time, and every once in a while, you know, uh, you know, because it's kind of hard. At least you guys, it's kind of, you know, it's pretty visible. But it's you to trim your shit. own vagina, you got to get in a mirror, and you got to be like over the toilet, and then you got to, oh, you know, and scary. then and then sometimes it's a leap of faith with yourself. Yeah, and there's been times when, when I, yeah, not good, oh, not God. good. And one time I couldn't find scissors, and I was on my phone with my uh, girlfriend Jewel, and I'm like, dang, I, I have this date, you know, with the activity partner, and I can't find the scissors. And she's like, well, don't you have like a uh, uh, when uh, people do arts and crafts, like pretty scissors, like a little brocade scissor. And I was like, yeah, but I can't do that because what about if I cut myself and I have like this brocade doily scar on my vagina for the rest of my life? You know what I mean? Oh, are you okay? Are you nauseous? No, because a couple of weeks ago, I caught my turtleneck in the zipper in New York. Oh, you did? In the men's bathroom at the Chinese restaurant. And when I was pulling it up, it was caught. And as I was pulling it down, the zipper was caught. I'm like, oh, God, don't tell me. <laughs> It's going to be one of those some about Mary moments, and I fucking had to unzip it, and there was no blood, no nothing. I just fucking put my little helmet away and ate my fucking wonton soup. <laughs> Big sigh of relief. You have no idea. Because one time I caught it. One time I caught it bad. When I was about 17, I caught it bad where it bled. I would not go for stitches. I just oh, really? put some fucking milk and magnesium on a Band-Aid and prayed for the best. And it's got a little scar on it. 
Yeah. But no big deal. I knew a guy that had a scar, and actually, he's a friend of ours. And I'm <laughs> I'll tell you off the air. No, no, but its no. name starts with A. Yeah, <laughs> but he, when I dated him in his 20s, he had like the biggest scar. And I, it was just one of those things like, dare I ask about the scar on the penis? Because I don't think you can be like, oh, God, you're so wonderful. What happened How'd to you the get fire? that gash on your cock? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, That's ridiculous. I'm happy I, I made the decision to quit smoking. And if anybody, you know, is thinking of quitting, anything like that, just think about it. Write it down. I wrote out the advantages and the disadvantages again. I just, I love smoking weed, you know. I really do. I like smoking. It calms me down. And that's all I want to do right now at this point in my life. I'm through with alcohol, you know. Like, I like it. I'll drink it. But it doesn't do nothing for me. I'm through with the drugs. You know, I, I've been having anxiety lately. That was another reason. <clears throat> because I didn't have anxiety for years. Right. And all of a sudden, the other night, I had the worst fucking anxiety. And then I had it again the next morning. And then the one day I had it, and Terry's like, you know what? Your skin's blotchy. What's going on? I was like, you know what? It's just too many coincidences. Yeah. It's just too many fucking things. It's, it's sparking up to The anxiety was coming from I hate doing it. I can't believe I was doing it again. You yeah. know, I don't want to slip. So if you're thinking of quitting something, I'm with you guys. That's all this is about. Fucking airplanes. Seriously. By the way, our last podcast. If you had heard, that fucking thing from Angel Heart. Had the clicking and it's Angel the Heart, ventilation yeah. in the roof. So I apologize for that, but there's nothing we could do about it. Because it gets fucking hot in my fancy garage. But I wanted to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Ramsey, who befriended me on Facebook and wrote a very sweet uh, uh, status thing on Facebook to me. And also he gave a donation. I went to go check the emails and he gave us a little donation. I would like to say thank you very much, Ramsey. Thank you, you Ramsey. Rock. And when I get back from Philly, I'm going to send out some shirts. So if you sent out a donation, I got Ali Bars on the list. I got my man up in Buffalo, Andrew. I'm putting out some shirts from Andrew wanted to order because they were out of medium, so I'm going to send him some mediums. we got to sign them. He wants you to rub your titties on them and for me to rub I'm a ball sack on them. So I'm going to send. So I got some shirts out. If you made donations over the last couple of weeks or something, I'm going to send you some mm-hmm. shirts because that's the least we can do, you know? Absolutely. Very funny lately. Um, one of the things that I love about this podcast is the optimism. And I hate when somebody, listen, I love being called out. But I hate when somebody calls me out for a lie and calls me a liar. That gets under my crow. So I'm at the Y Sunday. I forgot to tell you this. And I'm walking out the Y. And some lady comes up to me. And I've seen her before, but I don't know her. And she goes, excuse me. She goes, I just want to tell you something, man. You were talking to somebody in yoga a couple weeks ago about Weight Watchers. Me and my friends can't get it together with Weight Watchers. And you could just see she's fucking lazy, you know. And she goes, I don't really think you lost 100 pounds of Weight Watchers. She goes, I think you did the lap band. Right? What? And I go, what would make you think that? And then she goes, I just don't see how this thing works. Like, she was trying to pick a fight with me. I'm the yeah. fucking blue. Yeah. And I go, well, I, go, I got to tell you, how much effort did you put into it? She goes, well, I lost a pound the first week with my two girlfriends each gained weight. But the fruit and stuff, I go, the fruit's got no points. And I was about to argue with them. And I go, you know what? I go, first off, why would you think I did the lap band? And she goes, because there's no way somebody's body could change. She goes, I seen you on Showtime the other night. That's what it was. Oh, she goes, I seen you doing I know, because I see pictures that, you know, she, from a period when I didn't know you. And I'm, I get shocked. Like, what the She fuck? goes, I seen the you Showtime great, special. Joey. Thank you. So do you, beautiful. And she goes, I seen the Showtime special the other night. I couldn't believe it was you. And I heard you over some, telling somebody that you lost uh, the Weight Watchers. She goes, you used the Weight Watchers to supplement the lap band. I go, so let me ask you something. Are you putting words in my mouth? And she goes, I just can't see you doing it. You, you just, it was too much. I go, did you ever hear it coming to the Y four times a week? Did you ever go hear about going to Kung Fu and running around with things when you can't even do it and you're in pain? That's what you have to do sometimes. And she walked away with that little... Beverly Hills snarl. Oh, She's like, really? You did the lap band. I hate people like that. And I got my car, and I'm like, you know what's crazy? I don't even know this fucking lady to insult me. How crazy is that? Now, 20 years ago, I would have probably called her a dumb cocksucker or one of the other words I use. But just, I felt bad for her. Yeah. I felt bad for her because, because of her insecurity. She was lashing out at me like that. 
I wasn't even bothering nobody. I was I had boxing gloves under a thing and an iPod that was dripping and stunk with sweat. I yeah. wasn't even bothering nobody. Why would yeah. somebody want to fucking talk to me? Because my people shirt was sweaty. Are fucking lonely. Did you Joey? fucking my shirt They're was evil sweaty? And lonely. When I see somebody in their shirt sweaty and their iPods disgusting and they look and they're fat and they're sweating onions. I wouldn't fucking say two words to them. This bitch yeah. not only, like, and I was doing something, like, at least to look at me and say, you know what, compliments, you're in here, you fat fuck. She didn't even say that. Like, she was probably going in there to get on a bike and read while she was on the mm-hmm. bike for 30 minutes and tell her friends how. And it's just so weird how that's the kind of shit that gets me hot. Like, you don't even know me. How can you say something like that to me? And then call me a liar. Like, you heard me in a yoga class telling one of the girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck is up with people in California sometimes? Well, what the people fuck? people everywhere. I had an experience where I, last Saturday, took my kids to, uh, we had to go to do some, oh, we went to the farmer's market. And we stopped at a Starbucks, and it's in, it's in the center of a mini mall. And uh, right next to it was a, a savings account, like a, not a bank, but like a, a, a credit union. Credit union. And uh, so I just parked there because it's a clusterfuck because it's like 8, eight o'clock at Starbucks, <coughs> at Starbucks. And I uh, go in with my kids and get our stuff, having the most beautiful morning. And I come back out, and there's a guy, and he's kind of drunk, and he's smoking a cigarette, and he, and he yells at my kids, hey, your mom can't see this sign. And and I was all like, weird, you know what I mean? Like I I got little kids. I'm a woman. Like kids, just get in the car. You know, like I can't even acknowledge it. You know, and uh, and then he's like, see, your mom can't read the sign, and he kept saying it over and over. And I'm like, come on, dude. You know, these are my kids. It's you know, sorry. How old are you? Who and, gives yeah, a fuck? and and Will as you I run pull, the credit union? and then as I pull away. He, and there's a free parking spot next to me. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not in the right, but 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, you're not thinking the credit union is open. It might have been 9.15. But still, you know, I, and then I drive away, and then he yells out so my kids can hear it. Fucking bitch. Really? In front of my kids? Really? That's amazing. It's just, and that guy's definitely not from Beverly Hills, but he's just a douchebag all around. Yeah. It's just crazy that. And, I, and I'm sure I've done it to some. I, I, it's just amazing that somebody that I didn't know, I haven't had contact with, you know, yeah. maybe in passing. It's just amazing how people feel sometimes they could say things and you have well, to just take them. And, yeah, well, here's the thing. My kids were like, why did he say that to you, Mommy? And I'm like, look, you know, uh, he is obviously drunk. And, you know, sometimes people who have really unhappy lives have to make themselves feel above others in some fucked up way. You know, I try to explain it to my kids, but it's totally true. I had an experience once at Whole Foods, <laughs> and uh, uh, it, but it was a Whole Foods that had underground parking, and I got a p- spot right up front, and I, you know, maybe wasn't paying attention or anything, but I parked, and this guy and it was in a Rolls Royce, like a really fancy Rolls Royce, and he comes out, and he's about 50, but he's, like, threatening, and he starts, like, I've been waiting for that spot, and I didn't even think that he had been, you know, the way he was sitting to go into it, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, and, and he's like, you fucking, and he goes off on me, right, and I had my cell phone in my hand, and because I was caught in between two cars, and I'm like, sir, uh, if you don't back off of me, like, he's this close to me and yelling at me, I'm going to call the cops right now, you go ahead and fucking call the cops, and blah, 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 and I mean, and then finally he gets in his rolls, it's like a light blue rolls, and he drives off. And then it really freaked me out. Then a month later, I had to go to Toys R Us in a different part of town, and I see the blue rolls. And I see that there's a woman my age and a like, girl around 9 or 10 in the car. And, uh, and I went, and he wasn't there. And, uh, and I went up to him, and I go, uh, uh, you know, I think that I know the man that owns this car. And she's like, you do? And I go, yeah, you know, I have to tell you, I had an altercation with him that really scared me. And I feel as a woman, I don't know if it's your husband. And she's like, no, no, it's not my husband. I'm like, you need to know that this guy is threatening to women. You know, and I could see him walking out. And I go, look, he's coming over here. You know, I'm sorry to share that with you, but it really scared me. And I almost called the police. And I was afraid of my own safety. And I walked off. So fuck him. Oh, shit. The crime stopped him. Yeah. I like it. You stopped him you in know? his tracks. Yeah, like if you're driving a fancy car with personalized <laughs> license plates, don't fucking be an asshole around it. People know it's your car. It's uh, it's really amazing. I can't believe it's Easter already. I know that it goes by fast. It and, it's, goes and it's like Easter fast. Sunday, and it's like, raw.
uh, Greek Orthodox. So this is two years in a row that Greek Orthodox Easter falls on the same day as Easter. I was reading about it the other oh, day. Oh, really? So who the fuck knows? You know, the end of the world is coming. Who the fuck knows? You know the Greeks. Uh, we the, know Greeks the Greeks don't want no freaks, bitches. <laughs> well, out in the public. Hey, so tell us about Philadelphia. How was that? Philadelphia was very cool. Nice couple days there. Uh, the shows were packed. The shows were sold out. The fans were great. A lot of people listened to Beauty and the Beast, gave you a shout out and stuff. Oh, awesome. A lot of people came down, you know. Uh, just a lot of, it was really weird because the last five weekends I've been on the road and I've been working and talking to different people. And I've heard positive things and I've heard positive things and I've heard negative things. And I've heard, really? and then I've seen negative things that I didn't like how they came out. And one of the things was, when I performed at the Bitter End one night, one of the guys came. Right. And a real cool kid came out. And we uh, came out and said hello to me. We listened to Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we smoked a bone afterward outside. He met my friends. You know, we all got high mm -hmm. and stuff. And he's a young guy. He's a college student, you know. And then and I think we discussed this already, but I want to reiterate it. And then, because uh, it really fucking bothered me for two days. I was like, Jesus Christ. And then uh, I didn't think about it again. He wrote on Facebook, really nice guy. And then this weekend he came to Philly. And he came over, hey, how you doing? You want to go smoke? And, but I was overwhelmed. There was a lot of people there. It was a sold-out show. And in the conversation somewhere, he goes, hey, I got to ask you a question. I thought he was going to ask me about Felicia's pussy or, you know, something. The way he looked at me, he goes, hey, I'm undecisive whether I should do acid or mushrooms. And I looked at him and I go, neither. And I went home, and it really fucked with me, Felicia. Because, you know, when we do the podcast, this is the second time that a young kid has asked us, should I do coke or something? A couple of weeks ago, somebody emailed us or something like that. And it just bothers me that a kid would think, if it was up to me, I wouldn't want the kid to do anything. You know what I'm saying? But he's going to do it anyway. Right. He's going to fucking do it anyway yeah. because he's got it somewhere in his mind. But the way he asked... Like and we've discussed this. Like when we when I listen to the podcast, I like that people get something out of it. We connect on some ways. We yeah, got a that's great, the best part of we it. We got a great fucking email this weekend from a chick China. Just it just connected. It just really made sense. I looked at all the emails. I I couldn't answer a lot of them, but I looked at them because I just want to see what was cooking out there. But it was just really weird that they asked me this, Felicia. And it's like I told you last week that. The first couple of weeks, I was looking at when I go on the road by myself, and I was looking at when I go on the road with Joe. And I see how some of the kids act when Joe's around, because Joe talks about mushrooms and this and this. And it's really weird how, you know, if you did something, like I talk about robbing a fucking blind kid's cup. You know, I don't glamorize it. I did it. It's fucking done. I did it. It's right. in my resume. I don't want somebody else to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I put it out there because I want them to know that out of all the things I've done, robbing that thing with $3 in it really irks at me till this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. So please, don't ever steal a fucking blind kid's fund or a wheelchair fund, yeah. even if it's $3. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've robbed thousands, and that $3 irked me for the rest of my life. And the same thing goes when I talk about drugs on this show. I want people to say, you know what? He did them. He's one of the guys that made it out with his fucking teeth. And with, you know, a girlfriend, he made it out. Thank God, you know, but I don't want to condone it at no sense here. I'm a Momo at this point in my life, and I smoke dope, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be I'm gonna be 50, and I still smoke dope. And that even bothers me at times. But what else am I going to do? If I didn't smoke dope, I'd have to pull somebody over on Laurel Canyon and stab them. The driving's horrible out there today, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially on Laurel Canyon. Especially on a Monday. Yeah, it just, you yeah. know. So I just, it, it just, please, for the listeners that listen to this, when I talk about drugs or you know, robbing a hooker or whatever. I don't want you to even talk to me about it like you had thoughts about it. I want you to take what I'm telling you that at that time it was funny in my life. But 20 years later, it fucking eats away at me. I've kidnapped people and that don't bother me. But the fucking hooker and the stealing the thing and the drugs bother me, Felicia. It really has bothered me. So I forget what your name was. If you listen to this, don't take it the wrong way. If I'm not calling you something bad or nothing, I'd just rather you don't do shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, here's the thing about it. Uh, people are going to do what people are going to do. And uh, if you got to ask who's, uh, you know, should I do mushrooms or what was it, acid or whatever. Yeah, mushrooms. You know, that, the, the, if you're going to do that to, ex you know, expand your mind, then figure it the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't put it off on others by asking others. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, uh, 
I'm, I'm glad you brought this, this up because, uh, as you know, this weekend the activity partner and I went to go see American, the Bill Hicks story. And it's a documentary about the comedian Bill Hicks. And it was playing at the uh, on Sunset 5. The Lemley. The, the Lemley Theaters. And uh, uh, it was the most amazing documentary. And, you know, Bill Hicks uh, did a lot of acid and all that kind of stuff. And it was so incredibly well done visually uh, uh, and they told such a great story about how Bill was uh, in his own way the path to uh, becoming subversive and, and uh, anti-government and uh, all this kind of stuff and how he was so much appreciated around the world but in his own homeland because of the fact that he was talking about things that people uh, didn't want to hear, you know what I mean? And, uh, and it talked about uh, how he uh, did drugs and partied and uh, the comedians that were around him and uh, how he started out from being 15, the whole wonderful story and, uh, and how he changed when he, after he had a really big period of drug use and how it, he came to realize you know that that you, it can't always be that that you have to be focused too you know and then of course is uh, his illness that uh, took him too early but it was an amazing documentary and I took the activity partner and I'm so glad I did because uh, I had so many memories and I knew so much of the landscape of what the documentary was about because Bill started in Houston you know and uh, uh, there's a club in Houston called the Laugh Stop and he filmed uh, I think a special there with his friends and I remember that club uh, for me to see that club like I uh, recorded my first comedy CD there and uh, that was the club I played at when I was first starting out as a middle and my mother died I flew in and my mother had died and the woman that owned that club had had this horrific accident where her kids were, you know, on sometimes station wagons, your kids, uh, they have a third row in the back. You know, you, you pop the hatch and kids can sit there. Uh, her kids in a, in, on the freeway, like, fell out of the car. I, you know, I don't have the whole story, but, and they died. So she was a very uh, empathetic person. And when my mother died, they called the club, because this is before cell phones, you know, that everyone had one. And they called the club, and she came over and did the classiest thing any club owner ever did. And she paid me my week's salary. I had just gotten there. I hadn't even worked. And she said, your mother passed away, and I want to give you your week's salary, and I'm going to help you get a plane to, to get out of here. And, and it just gave me a lot of memories seeing the people like uh, Jimmy Pineapple, you know, at, uh, and his relationship with Bill Hicks and how they, you know, all worked together and how they struggled with alcoholism and, you know, that kind of stuff and how... Uh, uh, Bill struggled with not being known in this country and then becoming uh, quite large in other countries and also about his Letterman appearance, uh, how that was taken off the air and people didn't know he had cancer and, and how he went on Letterman and, uh, you know, uh, it never aired. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, I am going to go out there on a limb and say this is should be nominated in the Academy Awards for this year in Best Documentary because they did the kind of like the Ken Burns thing, you know, but it was Ken Burns thing with animation using clippings to express the whole story. It's a whole new way of filmmaking and documentary filmmaking, and I wanted to bring it up because we have a lot of fans in England and in Australia and Canada where Bill Hicks oh, was a... Uh, uh, had become more well known and if you're out there you should go s I wrote on my Facebook when I got home uh, I just saw the Bill Hicks uh, documentary The American and if anyone is on any side of the comedy business whether as a performer or a suit or a person that lo that listen or the an audience member uh, if you don't go see this in a movie theater because it's beautifully done and so visual if you don't go see it in a movie theaters uh, you can go fuck yourself <laughs> That's how good it was, Joey. And you, you played Houston, right? Yeah, no, no. I'm into the whole thing. You know, I'm into the whole, uh, listen, um, when I first got into stand-up, I, I was separated and I had nothing to do. And I used to rent that Rodney Dangerfield special with the five of those guys on it, Dice. And, and he had to follow Dice. And Dice destroyed the fucking room. And Hicks went up there and did the set that he followed this air. 
And he took that energy and flipped it. And he just took the set to somewhere where I had never seen it before. And it was brilliant. I always became a Hicks fan. And, uh, you know, whenever I am uh, I want to laugh, I put that one on. I yeah. really do. I have it on, on, on. In fact, I have it on VHS. I have to go in the bedroom and fucking watch it and stuff, you know. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I really am. I'm uh, psyched to watch it. I'm, I'm psyched that it's fucking good. Yes. I'm psyched from a comic standpoint that it's very good, you know. And it's a hell of a story, and it just matters so much for anyone that, you know, like you have all these comics all the time, and they're like, I just want to say, you know, say it like it is, and I want to make a change. If you're, I don't even want to have a fucking conversation with any comedian if they don't go and see this in a movie theater, because uh, it was incredibly uh, inspiring. Like, you, if you're a performer and you go see something like that, you can't, walk away from it without taking so much uh, with you. As you say, thank you for sharing. <laughs> fuck, fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck. Come on. This is your fucking life. This ain't no way I hate meeting bitch. Oh, yeah. The fuck is wrong with you? I hate when people say that shit to me. Thank you for sharing. Are you fucking crazy? Oh, really? You hate oh, that? Well, what do you say? Get the fuck away from me. You don't say nothing. You just sit there in awe. If the story is that good, you sit there in fucking awe and go, Jesus <laughs> Christ, how did I even fucking make it? I'm worried about that little dent in my car, and this bitch ran out of a room filled with fucking Chinamen and shit chasing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to sit there. Thank you for sharing. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you know a comic named Stephen Allen Green? I know the name. He was a comic uh, at the comedy store. When I first went to L.A., I was... Uh, uh, 19 years old and uh, I wanted to go and be a comic I had done it in Colorado and I went to the comic store and I didn't know anyone and I was trying to get into the comedy store and I was at the original room where the booth is and I was like yeah and I lined up at 5 o'clock my name is Felicia Michaels and I want to be a comedian and they're like how old are you and I'm like 19 and they're like well you can't get in the club You're, you have to be 21 I was like I know but in Colorado I used to work this club all the time and, blah, blah, blah. and they're like no no you can't put your name on the list are you really serious because like I really want to be a comedian and uh and so they wouldn't let me in. So I left, and I was walking away, and I didn't want to cry, you know, because you, then for sure they're not going to let you be a comedian, you know. And as I'm walking away, this comic, Stephen Allen Green, comes up. And he's like, uh, he was doing a, the door guy job or something. He was like, hey, little Missy, I saw that you were, you know, upset. Uh, is everything okay? You know, and I was like, well, I'm 19 years old, and they won't let me get, go do a set at the comedy store. And I've been doing comedy for about six months in Colorado, and I really want to do an open mic set. And uh, so he's like, well, you know, why don't you give me your number and I'll uh, give you a call and I'll see if I can talk to someone, right? And uh, so then he gave me a call uh, and uh, we went and had dinner at Musso's and Frank's and, uh, and he was totally nice and he gave me the right number and, uh, uh, but then he was also kind of, you know, doing a do thing and uh, so I called, I couldn't get in so that's why I went and did stripping for two years because I just couldn't get in and I had to figure out to go to other different smaller open mics and and I would strip during the day and every once in a while I'd pick up a Saturday nighttime shift. Uh, but then, so we're at the screening last night. The movie's fantastic. There's tears in everybody's eyes. The lights go up. Colin Hanks and the director and one of Bill uh, Hicks's uh, childhood friends who I think uh, did a lot of vi uh, videography and stuff for Bill Hicks and had made his own movies or whatever. Uh, he was there and Colin Hanks is all cute and funny and he's like, I would like to open it up to questions from the crowd. And I didn't know Stephen Allen Green was there, but then all of a sudden this voice goes, yeah, you know, when Bill Hicks did acid, did he, uh, uh, you know, claim to see UFOs and do you think it's a conspiracy? Like, I don't know. It was like one of those conspiracy guy fucking questions. Like, and, and, uh, and everyone turned around and I turn around and I'm like, oh my God, that's Stephen Allen Green. And oh, cause he moved to England after he was at the comedy store for a long time. And it was like, I live in England now and as an expatriate and the conspiracy shit. Right. And Colin Hanks was just like, uh, I do have information about that. It's in the trunk of my car, but I'm only going to show it to you, right? Because it was so awkward, and so everyone laughed. But then, it, and but then he, Stephen Allen Green, starts to talk again, and I was like, I know Stephen Allen Green. I have to move this off Stephen Allen Green right now. So I just yell out, uh, "You guys, thank so much for making this movie!" And then everyone applauded, and then they went on to the question and answering. But uh, uh, I was just like, oh, my God, Stephen Allen Green. And I turned to the activity partner, and I was like, that is so Stephen Allen Green. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, that's my story. 
Unbelievable. Yeah. That was your night. That was my You're night. You're a fucking savage. You know that? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I am. You're a fucking savage. Look at you. All right. I love you to death. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, the main people at SkinIndustries.com for all your athletic apparel. Go to SkinIndustries.com and order your Beauty and the Beast shirts. They're out of medium, so that's good. At least we're selling some shirts, so thank you. I got to send out some shirts this week to a few people, some people up in Buffalo, my man down in Orlando. Awesome. And I got to give somebody a shout out. They're a good bunch of guys down in fucking Hawaii and shit. Oh, really? That's right. They're a fucking shipping company down there. My man Chris with Young Brothers Shipping. Aloha, you little bitches down there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for wanting to eat little Felicia out and all that shit you little mm, f- filthy animals mm, talk about. Lick, lick, lick. lick a circle monkey, to the you know right. Circle to the right. Circle to the right. That's right. That's circle right. To keep, the right. keep giving it to my God boys down there. Damn, at the circle young to shipping. The right. You know what I'm saying? We went to Philly. The shows were great. I had some uh, cheesesteaks. They knocked on my hotel door one time because they smelled reefer. That's oh, always really? embarrassing. Oh, this is, really? This is a top of the line hotel, and all of a sudden they're knocking on my door, and the guy's like, "Yeah, people been complaining that uh, the smell of marijuana. Do you smell it?" And I'm like, "Not in a million fucking years." And they're like, "Well, if you smell it, or if you know somebody who's smoke, smoking it, tell them to keep it down." All right? And I'm like, <laughs> "He was a black dude. Thank oh, God for really? black dudes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank God for cool motherfucking black dudes." Uh, <laughs> Thank God you know? for the people that can open a can of smooth. And it's amazing that, you know, I was telling the audience, like, the last night I was in Philly, like, it was just a hotel and the comedy club, and I walked around the downtown. But it was weird that for about two months, I had criminal enterprises in Philly when I was 18 oh, really? and 19. My buddies went to Glassboro State, and they were scamming down there. They were uh, signing up for full credits, and then taking a loan out or getting financial aid for the full amount and then re- oh, withdrawing yeah. to part-time and keeping the balance. And I they, know people that did and that. And they loan yeah. money out and they fucking uh, take book down there. So after we robbed the guy in, uh, at the jewelry store and I went to Sarasota, Florida to hang out for a few months or for a month and a half, I went back to northern New Jersey. He had just gone down to school, so he kept saying to me, come on down, you know, see if you like it down here. And I'll tell you what, I used to have some crazy ass fucking times. That's what, if one thing that was crazy about that kid asking me about acid was that that's the first place I ever took window pane acid. That's the first time I ever took uh, uh, anything hallucinogenic was in Philadelphia. And it happened to be this fucking sugar cube. And it fucked me up for 12 hours. But the first three hours, Felicia, was so intense. And again, that's why when I look at 13 year old kids now, I look at them and I'm like, could they handle window pane acid at 13? You did it at 13? At 13. My buddy, you went to Philly at 13? Listen, my buddy Vinny Lynch, I was just telling Rogan and these guys because we listened to classic rock. September, uh, no, June of 78, I seen the best concerts that anybody could see ever. I seen Foreigner with the Stones in Philadelphia, and then they gave me a hit of window pane. I went with 17 and 18-year-olds. You ready for this? Uh-huh. The following week, I went to see fucking the police at CBGB's with Pukey's fucking license because in those days if you were from Jersey you didn't have a picture on your license there were just licenses it was a three page license so there was no picture on your license so all these guys took me into the city to fucking CBGB's and I watched the police as set doing Roxanne when you, you were 13? When I was 13. Yeah, I imagine Are you shitting? my head was about to explode. Then the last week of June, now all this happened. I also went to Five Star Basketball Camp, one of the premier basketball camps in the country, the home of Moses Malone. All this happened this month. And then that last Thursday of the month, my buddies go, dog, we got an extra ticket. We're going to the Nassau Coliseum. Go lie to your mother because we ain't getting back till two. We went to see Bad Company and the Desolation Angels tour. Again, I took a bunch of fucking mescaline and went up there. Once I got caught with that, once I took that uh, window pane in Philadelphia, it was fucking sensational. And it was 20 guys in the room, and I remember they all left, and I just sat by the windows, by the curtains. And the concert was at Veteran Memorial Coliseum. And I remember that one of them came back up, and he goes, Coco, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, I was out of it. I had smoked dope at that time. You know, I had drank Boone's Farm and Heineken's. You know, my mother had the bar. I had drank a lot. But at that age, I really wasn't a drink. I was still an athlete. But this kid, Vinny Lynch, that was fucking crazy. He said, come on, we're going down to Philadelphia, get in the back seat. And I went down there with them. 
And they gave me a hit of fucking window pane acid. That's why when I look at 13-year-olds, I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Wow. There's no way they could have handled it. And I went straight. Like, I, we went to the concert. We went to see the Stones, who were just amazing. And then I don't remember the ride home. Like, I just blacked out on the ride home. They, they were giving me Jack Daniels and whatever. Wow. That's fucking amazing. But all that shit. But I also went to see, you know, you won't know about it, but... The night that a lot of people, Dr. J fans out there, the night that Dr. J did that sensational slam against the Lakers when they were getting a point and a half, I was there in 83 again because oh, we just really? happened to go. That's like the, anytime time yeah. they show Julius Irving, they always show that move when he stops and he cradles that motherfucking rock and just flies and slams it. We were right there in the third row. We got tickets for $22 because we got there in the middle of the first quarter. I mean, it's just I've had amazing times in Philadelphia. But in Philadelphia one time, I rolled the guy. Me and Kurt DeLorenzo <laughs> rolled this fucking guy. And it was just one of those things where you had to pick up the body and carry him three Where'd feet. Where'd you roll him at? How'd we rolled, you find we him? We rolled him at a bar. We rolled him at a bar. What happened was we met him at a bar. We were all at a bar drinking like 22. Of, he had frat buddies, whatever the fuck they are. And they were all drinking at this bar. And the frat buddies were cool, but they weren't like me and Kurt cool. We were from northern New Jersey cool. You know, these other guys were fucking farmers compared to us. And they were cool. But they hadn't seen the shit we were used to. And also some guy came in and he's like, you know, I got blow, blah, 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 blah. And we're trying to fucking, yeah, let's do, let's do cut some rocks. But the other guys weren't into that. We were like 19. The other guys weren't into that. We start talking to the guy. And also the guy starts fucking doing quaaludes and he starts blacking out. But he told us he had like two ounces at his house. So we didn't know, you know, he had the keys in his pocket. Right. So now we got we had to pull a Felicia. I had to pick him up by his ankles and <laughs> pick him up, put him in the back seat. You know, make believe we were driving him home, but we were really, really rolling him. So this was the practice for kidnapping? This was, like, <laughs> this was way before kidnapping was even in my patois. At this time, we were just because rolling. It, isn't this like kidnapping? It was hysterical because we had, a, we had we lay him in the back seat. He ate a quaalude and he started drinking gin or something, like uh -huh. shots. And sometimes oh. when you start doing coke, it all hits you at once. Oh, and you could see it just yeah. hit him. And also the motherfucker passed out. That's all fine and dandy, but he was out of blow. Us two were hooked. He had a pocket full of quaaludes, he had dough, and he had this house. He goes, I live by myself, we'll get over there, we'll call these chicks I know. So now the guy, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like a chick who says she's going to suck your dick, and at 3 o'clock she passes out, and she starts puking. You're going to wait till she pukes, give Aww. her a 7-up, and get your dick sucked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're still going to do what you do. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. Every guy oh, that has been no. with a woman, a chick said, because how many, did you ever puke? Guys are great to you when you're puking if you haven't sucked their dick yet. Like, if you haven't sucked a guy's dick and you're puking, they rub your back because we know no matter how, what happens, <laughs> how bad you feel, how much you puke, we're going to get our dick sucked. Even if it's a dead blowjob, you're passed out you're, and we just push your head on it little by little. No, oh, yeah. We're no, going to get our Joey, dick sucked. I can't agree with yes. this Yes. Oh, please. Chicks know. You know. You get sick on a guy, you're still doing something. You're going to get cum on your titties. You're going to get something on your back in the middle of the night because you left us there. You told us at two you were going to no. suck our dick, and then at three you decide to drink two Zimas and get fucked Shut up. up. Now you want to fucking pass out. I don't give no. a fuck if you want to pass out. You're sucking this raggedy no, cocaine no, dick. No. So anyway, uh, the thing happens again. We, right. we get him in the car, and in the car, like first in the thing, he started passing out. Then he fell in the bar, and the, bar, and the people are like, oh, you got to get rid of him. And everybody's like, we don't know. We do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him a ride home. We hang with him all the time. Now we're trying to get his address from and he don't remember. He's in the car like, oh, 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 50, 50. Um, so now we got to get his license out, fucking go through his registration, make sure everything matches. We get him to his fucking house, ring the bell. Yeah, he lives by himself, but his mother lives upstairs. So here we are trying to rob the kid. We're carrying oh, him upstairs. Wow. The mother comes down, and the mother says to us, you know what? He's so lucky to have friends like you. Yeah, they want to rob the poor fucking <laughs> And finally, oh, no. dog, we sat there. Like, the mother's like, I'm going to go upstairs and get some black coffee. We sat there and, like, tortured him. Where's the blow? Where is it, cocksucker? Where is it? Finally, he, like, spit out the side of his mouth. Like, draw. That's all we needed. It was like an eight ball in there. We shook his hand. See ya. That's all we needed. That's it. How That's old were you? 19, 18. You know, we're oh fucking my kids. God. And did he did he know you guys? Like not at all. Oh. He met, you know those fucking momos that come into the bar and like, hey, what are you drinking? You drinking what of me? I'll have a drink with me. And next thing you know, you're at them. They're drinking eighty dollars and they're telling you about their life and they're giving you bumps and you're like, oh, I got a grape. Yeah. <laughs> I got oh, a grape. Shit. He's talking about oh, grams. No. You know those bars, you show up to the bar with $8, you want to just get a hot dog and a beer, and there's always that one tough guy that shows up, ah, 
I just did this. I'm in the mafia. Really? Well, fucking buy some drinks, cocksucker. Where's that <laughs> Jibo you were talking about? You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you never shit. sucked a drunk dick when you were all drunk and passed out after you puked? You never sucked a dick? <laughs> sure you did. I'm sure you did. Oh, uh, there's a couple of buildings that I drive by in Hollywood. As I drive by, I, my, I get a shudder up my spine. And that's why I always say I'm so glad I live in the valley now because when I drive my kids around, there's no buildings where I, I, I'm, I'm telling like, you, you know. Well, you and what else did you do at school today? Oh, my God, that's where I sucked a guy's dick and threw up on it. You know what yeah. I mean? Wait, that's what I'm Thank saying God. To. Thank that's God. You should always to. live don't... your 20s in a different spot in your city where you're going to live your 30s and 40s. We don't <laughs> care how sick you are. Once we get a piece of pussy in our mind, we don't give a fuck if you're on your deathbed. We're going to get you a stabbing. Whether you take it to go, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. Once Guys it, do that. How about when you have the flu and a guy still wants to fuck because you? Because you look sexy. You're all down. You're weak. That's how we want you. <laughs> oh, shit. You're, you're crawling. That's how we want you. Fuck your leg hurts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're warmer. Yeah. It's warmer inside. You know, whenever a chick is sick, that's when you get your horny. It's when you're that green. They got that green tint to them. You're like, what the fuck is this avatar? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe avatar lick my nuts when she's sick. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. We did it again. Yay. <coughs> I don't even know what episode number this is. Like 37. This is, this is 36. See what I'm saying? Because I didn't count 37. the repeat. Yeah. We You're are on episode 36. You and are a bad motherfucker. And it's Jerry all Diaz. to you guys. You guys uh, keep encouraging us. And thank you for the kind words and the kind notes. And we'll see you again next week. This is how we roll, bitches. Mwah. If you want to send us any emails, any suggestions, any comments, beautyandthebeast.com. Is that it? The Beauty and the Beast at Gmail. Beauty, Beauty and, the Beast, and the Beast podcast at, at gmail. gmail.com. You, you know, fuck it. Just go through the website. Yeah, and put some comments <laughs> on the website. You guys always do. And we love you. Stay black. That's all there is to it. All righty. Bye.